Hello everybody, welcome back to Camp Cola's workshop. Today I'm going to be reviewing the uh, Vruz End <coughs> lithium battery uh, that I bought. Um, I have upgraded my previous scooter, uh, which was a lead acid powered one, uh, a Pride scooter for which I did my first video uh, on scooters and I added another two lead acid batteries to that system. Uh, to increase the range. I have now purchased a Gleon Snap and Go which is a lithium powered scooter uh, as my main transportable scooter uh, and this is the battery that came with that particular scooter which is a 6.4 amp hours uh, and uh, was supposed to last I think between 10 and 15 miles but uh, I've only managed four miles, 4.5 maximum on mine, uh, and I've got two of these Gleon batteries, so it's it's and it's the same with the other one. So that seemed to be very optimistic in terms of range. So what I've decided to do is using the Bruise End battery system, is build my own battery uh, at 36 volts. Uh, I think it's some somewhere around 14 amp hours. Uh, which gives me a lot better range. So I think I probably have about 18 miles uh, on this battery. And I still use the two of these batteries as well um, that came with the Gleon scooter. So I, I, I think I've probably got about uh, 26 miles, something like that. Um, as you can see, uh, hopefully, I'll just zoom in uh, on the battery itself uh, so we can see very clearly what's going on. As you can see on all my batteries I mark the amount of charges that are being done uh, so I can keep a record and if we basically 15 uh, charges this one's had this new battery. So let's have a, a look at uh, the battery itself um, and I'll just go through what it is, how it is and how you put it together briefly. Um, as you can see, what, what I've decided to do, rather than um, use the materials that I purchased with the Bruise End 200mm uh, finishing kit, which consists of wires, some of which I've used, capped on tape, shrink wrap, I've decided to put construct my own housing, which is a really useful box, uh, which has quite a secure lid on it. Uh, the advantage of this is it's very robust. As you can see, I've put... Uh, uh, floor foam in uh, around the sides, bottom, uh, also some, floor, some foam goes on the top just so the battery is completely uh, held uh, and safe in here. There's no movement and it's certainly very much insulated from shock uh, which was very important to me uh, that that happened. So that's my housing. Uh, as you can see I've got room in here for the battery management system. Uh, which I also bought from Bruise End, along with the uh, 50 18650 Samsung cells uh, and to make 36 volts um, and, and that, that was the uh, spec of the battery. So unfortunately as you can see uh, I've had to cut out the BMS um, which uh, more about that later so we'll have a look now at the, uh, the battery itself. Uh, I'll just take out, you can see I've got an input and output sockets there. Uh, so we'll just clip unclip, they're not actually glued in for this purposes of this uh, demonstration. So I'll just take out the battery itself and you can just see that I've got some foam down there in the bottom of the battery cover as well box just to make sure that there's not any vibration going through there. Uh, you can see now the construction of the uh, battery itself. You've got the Ruse End caps here, which uh, I'll show in a bit more detail here. That's the cap inside itself. You can see that there's the terminal in there. Uh, and these caps click into each other. That's the that's where the battery goes. 
that's where the bolt goes on top. Uh, so that's the core of the unit, if you like, the battery unit, and that's uh, that's what holds it together partially. Um, well, uh, you've also got here the strips uh, and bolts that connect the whole thing together and save us not having to do any spot welding. I don't mind doing spot welding, but I wanted to experiment and use the best attributes of this battery system, which is it can be deconstructed and rebuilt uh, in, a, in a different, you know, for a different voltage or, or uh, higher amp hours, depending on what you want to do. So that, that's what I liked about this. Um, and I liked also it, it had its own strength as well uh, through this system. So everything, as I say, the charger I got from Bruce End, the BMS, uh, and all the batteries. So what's happened? Well, it, everything was fine for 15 charges, uh, and then suddenly the charger stopped working. Um, and uh, I just happened to have uh, dual redundancy in the sense that I had a spare BMS, uh, so I changed that, and I had a spare battery charger, so I changed that, and still the battery would not charge. So after talking to Bruce End, uh, I got the impression that, that probably inside here, one of the batteries, or one or more, has actually failed. Um, so we, uh, we're we going to have to disassemble all of this um, basically to find that battery. From what I've read I, I believe these BMS's, uh, certainly the cheaper ones, I'm not saying this is a cheaper one but it isn't, a, it, it wasn't a lot of money, uh, don't really control very well if there's a battery that has gone out of voltage and therefore just don't charge. Um, so that's probably what's gone on here. I think there's a battery in here that's that's not good. Um, assembly, as I say, was very straightforward. It's a matter of clipping in those caps and then putting on the, the strips, uh, but just making sure you do it in the right order. Uh, there's a video from Ruse End on YouTube on how to do this, including, I think, putting the BMS on. Um, so you've got a safe battery and each cell is has a control each cell row has a control charge unlike now uh, because now my BMS isn't working I've got to raw dog charge aka bolt charge um, so what what we have to do in that circumstance when there is no BMS on We just charge through directly into the battery with the mains charger. In this case, I bought a 42 volt charger uh, from Bruce End. However, we're not charging up to 42 volts for safety reasons, i.e. Uh, I don't want to overcharge if there is any faulty cells in there. I don't want to overcharge them, so I'm only going up to 40, 40 40.5 volts when I charge, uh, maybe a little bit more, but I certainly won't be going any further than 41 volts. And that just keeps the power down on the whole pack uh, and doesn't hopefully overcharge any faulty batteries in there. So that's how you measure uh, what's going into the battery and what's what, what the, the current voltage is. So you'd be looking ordinarily to get up to maybe around 42 volts for this, but not without a BMS. Okay, so that's uh, electrically the situation that I'm in. Uh, so as I say, I've got to strip this down. Um, now, I, I, I like the, uh, as I said, I like the uh, construction of the Bruise End system, but however, um, I have had some stress cracks appear in this system uh, fairly early on. Um, now, I haven't put any caps on tape around here, so there's nothing taping it, but I had hoped the actual system itself, uh, the caps, would would be enough, but 
I'll show you what's happened. Uh, so, let me find one that's got a split in it here. Hopefully you can see that. You can see there's a split down there uh, and the cap has completely split from one end to the other. Uh, and that's ha happened on quite a few uh, of these caps. So, see there's another one there where it's uh, where it's split and it has actually split all the way through uh, to the top so you can see here that there's a split all the way through now I did uh, do some reading about this and it's possible to split the cap by over tightening the bolts here uh, these are 5.5 mil bolts uh, uh, I had a 5.5 mil socket but they are quite unusual so you might need to order one of those from Bruzend as well. Uh, anyway back to the tightening I tightened very carefully uh, to just make sure that uh, I was basically getting a good bond uh, but not over tightening and you can see here there's no evidence of over tightening because there's not the, the bolts there's not any indentations around the bolts and the uh, strips aren't sagging or showing tension here of being torqued too tight so when I take this apart what I will actually do is uh, put on some little flat washers I've got uh, onto these bolts I'm surprised that wasn't actually supplied with the kit um, and that, that I think will make things safer uh, and better. Okay so that's where we are structurally with the battery as well. Um, so so far uh, I've come across these two issues um, and I will strip the battery down and try and sort that out and replace the battery. I don't know what the warranty is like with Vru's end uh, but as I say after 15 charges this is what's this is what's happened okay uh, so any comments about that if you think I've done something wrong um, any help with the BMS system uh, and to why that isn't working uh, that would be appreciated um, and any comments people have got on the ruse end itself uh, and how that works basically the video that they've got on YouTube shows you all of the information that you need to know um, and that's it for part one in part two what I'm going to be doing is showing you my climate control system that uh, I built uh, for this particular battery uh, and it features a separate 12 volt lithium battery system with a cooling system and a heating system and a controller so if you're interested in seeing how I did that, go to part two. Thank you very much for watching.